At Life Groups, Matt Lear here, minister to Life Groups. You know, we say at Church of the Cross that we are renewed as community. And as we experience this renewal, we grow in an increased passion to see renewal brought to the world around us. We long to see things like people coming into a loving relationship with Jesus. We long to see kingdom principles lived out in this world, things like compassion, justice, and mercy. And so we long to, we long to come together as a community, be renewed, and bring renewal to the world around us. And Life Groups are a great place for this to play out. So we have prepared uh, three videos for you to watch from three different ministry leaders explaining uh, different missions, oppor- ministry opportunities for you to be involved in as a group. And so I would just like to issue these three challenges to you as you watch these videos. One, I would just ask you to use the discussion guide that will be provided for you and, and just have a discussion with your group and seek to educate yourselves in the biblical principles behind these ministries. Two, I would just ask that you'd be praying for these ministries that exist at Church of the Cross and just be praying for God's effectiveness through these ministries. And three, finally, I would ask that you as a group have a discussion around these ministries and decide whether or not this one of these ministries or a similar like-minded ministry is something that you can engage in as a group. Hope you enjoy these videos and thank you for taking the time to watch them. A study shows us that in 2019, there's over a million students here in the United States right now uh, studying from various parts of the world. And it's not just that it's a million students from any country in the world, but many times uh, these students are coming from the least reached locations on earth. A recent study shows us that 17% of the world leaders right now, prime ministers, kings, queens, whatnot, they, they, were, they were educated here in the United States, 17% of them. And that's not to count all of the, the other leaders that go back as business leaders and economic leaders and, and even spiritual leaders. But specifically, Texas has been the most welcoming state in the, whole, in, in the entire United States over the past decade to refugees. These are folks that are uh, having to escape their home country, their homelands, for reasons of persecution and other terrible reasons. And they're, they're, they're being brought here to Texas, right here at our doorstep. The statistics are showing us that nearly uh, 80% of international students that come here to the United States actually never have the opportunity to step into an American home. They're never welcomed to dinner with an American family. These are students coming here uh, that we have the opportunity to reach with the the gospel of Jesus, that they might return with that same gospel on their lips. That as they are influencing others, they have the Christian gospel on their lips. We see in Leviticus 19, God says this to the people of Israel. He says, when a stranger sojourns with you in your land, you shall not do him wrong. You shall treat the stranger who sojourns with you as the native among you, and you shall love him as yourself. For you are strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Jesus says this in Matthew 25. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Jesus describes himself as the stranger and says as as we welcome the stranger, we welcome Jesus. As we look at scripture, uh, it's this grand narrative that's all working toward uh, what we see in Revelation 7, 9. And it's this glorious picture of where all peoples from every tribe and tongue and nation will bow at the feet of Jesus. In Ephesians 2, it says this about followers of Jesus. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So we, ourselves, were spiritual foreigners. 
and, and, and as a result, we ought to respond by reaching out to the foreigners amongst us to share this love of Jesus, recognizing that we were foreigners and we've now been called sons and daughters and co-heirs with Christ. We at Church of the Cross want to take advantage of this uh, great opportunity, this strategic opportunity to reach the nations even without having to leave DFW. Now we don't want to reinvent the wheel, we're not looking to uh, create a bunch of ministries here. Uh, we would just highly commend to you some great organizations here in the area, organizations such as International Friends of Grapevine or For the Nations Refugee Outreach. There's another great one known as Dash Network. You can find out more information on our website about them. We again continue to list those as we uh, discover new great ways that God is using people to reach internationals here in our community. Church at the Cross, I believe the time is now for the American church to take advantage of the strategic opportunity that God has given us. He's been bringing internationals from some of the least reached locations on earth here to our very doorstep. And so the question becomes, how will we as spiritual foreigners, those that God has made into his sons and daughters now, how will we respond? Will you join us?